<laughs> girl of steel, more like girl of what's your deal. So here's my reaction to episode one of season three of Supergirl. What's going on guys? So before I get on Supergirl's case, with all due respect, shout out to my boy, John Jones. He was given the honor to walk Alex Danvers down the aisle. It's about time they started treating the Martian Manhunter with some respect. So shout out to my boy. Now let's go ahead and get back on Kara's case right quick. So you're telling me that we come back after a few months only to find Kara still driveling and moping around over Mon L, the fact that he got sent away, she's still crying over this Daxamite. I mean, her attitude throughout this entire episode up until the end just really kind of blended out the episode. It made everything seem abnormal. I mean, the whole episode just seemed so weird to me. I mean, if you don't get out of here with this lustful Kryptonian version of a wet dream that you're having, I mean, you don't go on somewhere. I guess people from Daxa must be laying some good wood out there, ain't it? I mean, if you want the D that bad, why don't you turn to my boy Wynn? I mean, if we're being honest here, no offense to Monel, he was a great character. But honestly, I don't care that he's gone. But my goodness, Monel, you must was really land some good wood if Kara misses you that bad. So kudos to you. But if I'm being honest here, the reason I don't miss you that much, because I honestly just doesn't, I don't ship you with Kara. I ship car and win, my dude. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know how I am in my videos. Um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm crazy about my ships now. I would talk about how much I ship these two and why, but um, I guess I'll say that for another video. I, I think this could be one of those ships. But um, stay tuned. So DC tries to say that humans are weak because they always try to get through their losses. But honestly, if you a Kryptonian can't get through your losses. Doesn't that make you weak? I mean, this whole famous Dex, I'm not human thing. I mean, dude, get out of here with that. I mean, just say it. You missed the D. So, Carl, I'm glad you got through your little um, pity party um, at the end of the episode. Because I seriously do not have time to be putting up with your mess in this season. So, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and get over Monel. And just go ahead and start talking to my boy, Wynn. I mean, where is Wynn's girlfriend at? Yeah, that um, that funny face, um, raccoon, possum mix looking girl. I mean, she's nowhere to be found. I mean, you might as well go ahead and dive right in. <laughs> and another thing about James Olsen, I'm gonna need Guardian to have a bigger role in this season than he did last season. Because I mean, don't get me wrong, I like superpowers as much as the next guy. I mean, the Flash is my favorite superhero in this whole DC Arrowverse concoction we got going on here but when it comes to visual antis i mean they're important too so i need guardian throughout season three almost every episode i don't need james one episode being this being in charge of the company and then and then three episodes later oh all of a sudden he's guardian no i want every episode him as guardian i demand it so i'm glad they brought up guardian in this episode because you best believe guardian better have a big role in season three and you're already off to a bad start he wasn't even in episode one and i highly doubt he'll be in episode two either get it right he needs to fight you wonder the bad part about it was he even at the girl of steel little presentation thing i mean he doesn't even hang out with the other crime fighters i mean come on I mean, he needs to go work with the D.E.O. I mean, if, if someone, if that guy's going to buy Catco or whoever, Lena, Luther or whatever, this guy needs to go work with the D.E.O. And if you're not going to have him do that on his own show, at least have him go fight as a visual anti somewhere else. I mean, send, send him to Earth-1 the, with the arrow. He'll be put, put to great use. Him and Diggle will get along great. Or send him to the Wave Rider with the Legends. I mean put this guy to use i mean his character on supergirl i mean you're kind of wasted it i mean don't get me wrong i like his i mean i like how he cares for not just supergirl but Kara. but when it comes to guardian i mean visual antis are very important to me so get it right so at the end of the episode Kara's kryptonian wet dream was interrupted by apparently who they call in the comics rain and apparently the woman who saved her kid and the uh, whole celebration thing from being trampled by that um that big metal thing is that's who Rain's supposed to be. So I'm very interested to see how that turns out. But I mean, 
overall, this was a pretty good episode. I mean, at first, I was kind of bored watching it, considering everything was so mopey. But then once the action picked up, I mean, I pretty much, you know, got back into it. It's kind of hard to, you know, have so much expectations from these DC shows when you got shows like The Flash and Arrow with all the action. But then you go watch, like, Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl, which, I mean, are great shows, but they're just not as good as the very first two that came out. But overall, this episode was pretty good so guys i hope you enjoyed this review if you did please give it a thumbs up and for more videos about supergirl or any other arrowverse shows hit that subscribe button see you guys later